welcome to this edition of News Leader. Today is Tuesday, September the 20th, 2022. I'm Andrew Todd. In tonight's news, Tullahoma held a special 2040 town hall meeting. The Tullahoma Wildcats lost to Creekwood and the 41A Fest is it coming up this weekend. We'll have all these stories and more on tonight's News Leader. Parkview Senior Living, active, independent senior living at its finest. Hi there, this is Terry Stroop, Stroop's Factory Refrigeration. Summer's about to wind down, fall's right around the corner. It's time to get signed up for your fall maintenance checks and let's get out and support our local high school football this year. Let's go, cats. We teach Parkinson's patients how to move big and not let the Parkinson's slow them down. I've had patients I've treated in-house that could not even stand up, could not roll over in the bed, left the facility walking with a walker, have come back to us and outpatient and continued their big program and are now completely, you know, handling life. The success of the program is just phenomenal. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Welcome back. Last night, the Tullahoma Board of Mayor and Aldermen held a special town hall meeting with the Tullahoma Planning Committee, designers of the Tullahoma 2040 plan, the Walker Collaborative, and interested citizens. The meeting was just short of four hours and heard from many citizens with varied ideas about the plan. After the citizen comments, the board discussed what to do with all of the information. The last thing on the agenda tonight is, is to We've been asked to, by staff to propose to staff recommendations. And for the Board of Mayor and Alderman, I'd like to suggest this, and I will make this in the form of a, a motion, that we take these 148 pages, I've read every one of them, by the way, plus the two additional pages I got today. I would propose that we refer this comprehensive plan back to the Planning Commission, who has the authority and responsibility for developing a comprehensive plan. For them to synthesize the comments that we've received, and I believe that if you narrow them down to Take 90% of the comments we've heard, you could put them into one of four categories so you can be, they can be grouped. But at this time, I've entertained a motion to refer this back to the Planning Commission for incorporation of the comments that we've heard over the last two, well, over the last month with all of our planning, all of our comp plans, uh, public hearings that we've had. So I'd entertain that motion at this time. I'll second with an amendment, if possible. What's your amendment on there? That the, because I think just sending it back to the Planning Commission on its own without recommendations from the board kind of, and some input from us uh, could land that plan right back in the position that we're in. So I would recommend, I would amend to say we do that, but the board also have a special called meeting where this is the only thing that we do and we each come to that meeting with specific amendments or specific things that we would like to see changed and we can formalize that and give that to the planning commission so that the planning commission can have those concerns addressed as they're going through before it comes back to us uh, for another time so I guess my amendment would be that we have a special called session and each board maybe two weeks out or three weeks out to give each of us enough time to digest everything that we've heard here today and come come with a list of this is specific what I'd like to change. I'll accept that amendment. We have the motion to send it back to the Planning Commission after we have had recommendations from the board through a special call meeting. Um, I would just like to say that I hope that our 
Board of Mayor and Aldermen are able to approve a plan. Um, from what I'm hearing tonight, it sounds as though there may be enough people just to vote it down completely. I would find that extremely disruptive to the entire community um, for a lot of reasons. We do have a comprehensive plan that we're working under, and I know everybody at this uh, stage knows that, that we are working under the 2012 plan. It is a copy-pasted document um, that was just put together from MTAS, and it is, it, is, it is a major reason why we are in the shape we're in right now. Um, it, it wasn't in any way tied to Tullahoma. It wasn't in any way looking at um, um, who we are as a, as a community, and I think we had a, a group come in here that, that uh, did their very best to do that and it is going to be a plan that is not going to um, appease everyone however um, I think the idea of uh, voting no would would be extremely disruptive so I will I will also support what you you had to say there mayor but um, um, I, I hope that our the rest of our board will find a plan that will work for them okay, very good okay we have a motion with an amendment I'll call for the vote I'll start with my vote, if I may, I vote aye. Yes. The vote is to postpone. Tell me what we're voting on again. To have a special call meeting where we each come with a specific list of things that we would like to see changed so another before, special call meeting so that before it goes there we have everything out that we want to get changed so that when it comes back to us so this is just be for the board not for the board just, and planning commission just the board. And we'll send okay. them our okay i vote yes you're voting again yes yeah. yeah. mm -hmm. yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Alderman Glick, your vote was yes. Your vote was aye. We have a unanimous vote from the Board of Mayor and Alderman to refer this back to the Planning Commission to accept it, to take all the comments that we've received tonight, plus comments from the Board after a special call meeting to refer it back to the Planning Commission. That is the direction to staff. On Friday night, the Tullahoma Wildcats football team lost a home conference game against Creekwood High School of Charlotte by a score of 16 to three. John Gray spoke with Wildcats coach Coy Sisk about the game on last week's fifth quarter show. Just, that was a, it was a, it was a different kind of ball game last night, coach. Hey, tough ball game, no doubt about it. Hey, uh, and guys played, guys played well from time to time. We've got to, got to do some things, John, take care of the football right. a little more often. This one's a little harder to shake off. Uh, but you've got, you know, you've got, you've got a bunch of young boys playing ball. Well, you've we, got sophomores playing against seniors. And uh, I, was, I was looking at the scores, you know, Marshall County didn't beat them but three points last exactly, week. Exactly, exactly. It's not like it's not like they nobody they somebody. Oh, senior laden football team, and uh, hey, well coached football team. We'll get into that a little later. Yeah, things that they did that that was impressive. But you know, one of the main things is, hey, we're this far along, uh, and there's only so far that I can push that youth. We got to grow up, and right. Hey, we got to say, look, we got to realize we might be sophomores, but. We better play like seniors on Friday yeah. night. And we still have, we still have some players missing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that makes a difference as well. Uh, but uh, it was, uh, hey, we were just talking about it earlier. Uh, the band, our band, they didn't bring a band. Wow. Of course, I mean, that's like I say, it's two and a half hours to Creekwood, mm -hmm. no matter how you slice it. Uh, but our band was absolutely fantastic last night. Well, you know, I was telling you when I first got here today, John, that I'd, I'd called Justin Scott uh, on the way into the show this morning and told him how much uh, I appreciated it and how, much, how it didn't go unnoticed that I know they're at competition today, but I'm surprised they're able to get up to move this morning because <laughs> during the third quarter, we were on defense the entire third quarter. 
And uh, I, wow. noticed, I noticed the band. And I don't usually notice things like that, the crowds, the band. But even in my head, I thought, these guys have been making noise all right, for the entire third quarter. And uh, so they helped us out with Creekwood last night. Uh, in the third yeah, year. Yeah, they did. They did. And it's really good when they, when they they get fired up and 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 you know they're a big part they're a big part of what goes on. They're a big part of Wildcat football. Uh, yes sir. Have That's been for years ever since I was in school. Uh, we had a great band program back in the 60s. Mm -hmm. You know, better than uh, Max Weaver was the band was the band man then. And uh, you know, it was better than anybody else around even back in the 60s. So it's been a been a tradition in Tullahoma not only to have good football but to have good band. Well, and we, we we thankful for them. Sure, and I don't get a chance to to see those guys yeah. very often. But on Fridays they rehearse uh, on the practice field. Uh, so I, I, that's the time that I kind of get to take a spy at them. Right, and, and you know, uh, usually when I get there, they're lined up out there at T-Town, mm -hmm. you know, out on, in front of the stadium, and, and and they march through, and then the football team goes through about six, mm -hmm. and, you know, and then we get ready to play football. And uh, and now, what did you say earlier? We, this first time in how many years you played football, we did not have one offensive snap. Said, in the third quarter. Not one offensive snap in the third quarter. In 20 years of coaching football, I can't remember uh, seeing it <laughs> or definitely being a part being of it. Being part of it, yeah. So, uh, like I said earlier, I know, hey, the band, I mean, you could hear them on there right then. And the entire third quarter, those guys are. Because they play run. when you're on defense, of not course. when you're on offense. Yeah, they, they want to disrupt the other team. Right, right, right. So right. they're playing while we're on defense, and that was. Uh, like I said, I noticed it Friday night. I'm sure, our guys noticed it. Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah. Tullahoma noticed it. Like we did. Yeah. Stans noticed it, so uh, good for them. And after these messages, we'll be right back. MacArthur Manor Assisted Living is passionate about creating better experiences for our Manchester seniors. Our residents describe us in a few words. Welcoming. When you walk through the doors at MacArthur Manor, we'll treat you like family. Caring. Through high standards of personalized care, we help residents live life to its fullest. Engaging. With a wide range of life-enriching activities, there is something for everyone at MacArthur Manor. With our residents and staff now vaccinated, call us today to schedule your safe and personalized tour. We tend to lose our motivation when we have something that's chronic, but you've got to do what you can early on as you can. After I'd exercise like that, I would have a lot of energy to do housework or whatever I needed. Well, I would recommend it highly to anyone at any degree of Parkinson. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Welcome back. To celebrate the 10th anniversary of National Voter Registration Day today, Secretary of State Trey Haggard is encouraging Tennesseans to register to vote or make sure their address, is on, address on file is up to date. Secretary Haggard said, quote, registering to vote is the very first step to making your, choice, making your voice heard on election day. If you're not registered, National Voter Registration Day is the perfect time to get ready to cast your ballot. Registering to vote is important because, of our, because our society is better off when every eligible voter participates in the process, end quote. It has never been easier to register to vote, cast a ballot, or get accurate election information in Tennessee. Registering to vote, updating, or checking your resignation, reg registration status is fast, easy, and secure with the Secretary of State's online voter registration system, GoVoteTN.gov. Using a computer, phone, or tablet, any U.S. citizen with a driver's license or a photo ID issued by the Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security can register in minutes at GoVoteTN.gov. Each submission is checked against the Tennessee Department of Safety and Homeland Security's database. A paper voter registration application is also available to download at GoVoteTN.gov. Coordinator of Elections Mark Goins said, quote, Making it easier than ever before for Tennesseans to register to vote and cast a ballot while protecting the integrity of our elections is our highest priority. We work with legislatures and county election administrators so that every Tennessean can have confidence in our elections and know that it's easy to vote 
and, ha and hard to cheat in the volunteer state, end quote. Tennessee was recently ranked number one in the country for election integrity by the Heritage Foundation. This ranking results from Tennessee's continual work to incorporate the best practices to protect the integrity of the ballot box. Tennesseans are encouraged to use the Secretary of State's GoVoteTN hashtag on social media posts promoting voter registration on National Voter Registration Day and throughout the year. National Voter Registration Day and National Voter Registration Month are nonpartisan nationwide efforts to encourage all eligible voters to register and participate in the electoral process. For more information about registering to vote in Tennessee, go to GoVoteTN.gov or call the Division of Elections toll-free at 1-877-850-4959. And we'll be right back after these messages. It's not invoice. It's not MSRP. It's not Christmas Day, although it may feel like it. It's the lowest prices in Middle Tennessee, period. Get to Stan McNabb Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram or Stan McNabb Chevrolet Buick GMC Cadillac before these prices are gone forever. Welcome back. A prominent Tullahoma pastor resigned from his church last Wednesday, just days after the Tennessean told the story of Valerie Swope and her experience as a clergy sexual abuse survivor. The pastor, Christian Watts, cited questions from congregants in recent days about his leadership in a post on Facebook announcing his decision to step down from Life Change Church. Watts said in a post on the church's Facebook page, quote, I am deeply sorry for any pain and sorrow this has brought upon you." End quote. Watts has acknowledged that when he was at Swope's youth pastor at a Southern Baptist church in Louisville, Kentucky, he had sex with her starting when she was 16. Swope said in a statement on Thursday, quote, I have peace in this moment because of his resignation that he will no longer be a pastor at this church. My heart goes out to the Life Change Church who have been blindsided with difficult truths and I pray for their healing and protection." End quote. Swope initially reported what happened in 2002. She then began sharing her story more publicly in 2019 at a time of growing awareness of clergy sexual abuse within the Nashville-based Southern Baptist Convention, the nation's largest Protestant denomination. Since then, clergy sexual abuse has been one of the most difficult issues the Southern Baptist Convention has grappled with. Voting delegates at the 2021 SBC annual meeting passed a non-binding resolution saying that a pastor is no longer qualified if they are credibly accused of sexual abuse. Then this past May, investigators with Guidepost Solutions concluded a third-party investigation into SBC leadership and revealed in a report details about convention leaders failing to support abuse reform measures. Life Change, founded by Watts in 2017, started as a Southern Baptist church. It left the convention three days after Guidepost published its report. Watts said in a prior statement, Life Change's decision to leave the SBC was unrelated to the timing of Guidepost's report. Swope's case was investigated by Louisville police in 2019. Though a, fel though a felony in Kentucky today, Prosecutors determined they couldn't charge Watts for his actions back then because of laws at the time, according to Swope. Ex-Pastor Watts said in a prior statement, quote, it is important to note that an illegal relationship never happened, end quote. And then he added, quote, two of the key attributes that are essential of a church leader is to have impact within its community are trust and integrity. These two attributes are being called into question when it comes to my leadership, end quote. In the past few years, Swope shared her story with Southern Baptist pastors and ministers, Southern Baptist officials at the local and state levels, and advocates and other survivors. If life change had remained in the Southern Baptist Convention, it could have been subject to a review process into whether the church met convention standards on pastoral qualifications. The end result of that review process could have ended with a similar result following a vote to kick the church out of the convention. Similar line of inquiry seemed to come from Life Change's own ranks. We will update you as this story further develops. 
Stay with us. We'll be right back after these messages. For many senior citizens, life looks like this, but it doesn't have to. When you make your home at Parkview Senior Living, life after retirement takes on a whole new meaning. Daily exercise options, fun outings, happy hour, game nights, movies and popcorn, arts and crafts, enjoying friends over chef-prepared meals. Parkview Senior Living, where you're always home, but you're never home alone. I had a knee replacement, so they have got me in life care, which I'm very, very thankful for. I couldn't garden, I couldn't do my flower beds, I can't chase my little dogs. I have been in several therapy sessions for knees and back, and that's the best therapist I believe I've ever been to. It's tremendous because I'm able to walk again, but if it wasn't for the care, I wouldn't be where I am. Let us champion your recovery. Life Care Center of Tullahoma. Welcome back. John Gray recently spoke with the 41A Festival planners about this weekend's event. It's Saturday, right? It's our, our 12th annual festival. There we um, go. We're halfway there. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> there we go. Our halfway mark. Um, it's Saturday, September 24th, 2 o'clock at Grider Stadium. We hope everyone will come out, um, like you said, to support the community. We've actually, we've had so many people sponsor the event this year. We've got vendors, we've got Kids Zone, we've got so many things going on. Um, we support with the, the proceeds from the festival, we support uh, local children's charities. That's why we do this. Um, Wonderful. Charities like Head Start, Casa Works, Coffee County Community, Children's Advocacy Center, Toys for Tots, Tullahoma Daycare, Caring for Kids, um, Haven of Hope, Imagination Library, Horseplay, and, and that's just some of the many we support. This year, we've actually already given out twenty thousand dollars to those char wow. you know, charities, just like that. Congratulations! So, thank you. Yeah, it's our biggest fundraiser of the year, and we're expecting everybody to come out and have a great time. We're already claiming it's going to be perfect weather. Mm -hmm. and we've got five great groups lined up. It's going to start off at two o'clock with Chase Clinton and Vintage Vibes, followed with Stagger Moon, then Utopia, Motley Inc., which is a Motley Crew cover band and then Atomic Punks, which is a Van Halen tribute band. Wow. So it's going to be... And that's on... Saturday? Saturday. Saturday. December 24th. 24th. Yeah. And we're going to be there all day and uh, come out and have a great time. We're also bring the kids, bring the family. We're going to have a big kids zone. We're going to have some bounce houses provided by Master of Ceremonies. Lowe's is going to have a build and grow workshop for kids to come out and work on some stuff. Uh, we're going to food there, Will. There's going to be lots of food trucks and, of course, beer. Too. And beer. Of course, you've got to have <laughs> yeah, beer. We're yeah. Miller Lite Bud Lights, two of our biggest sponsors. Right. So it helps us put this on. So, yeah, it's going to be a great event. And it's just wonderful because the whole town can can feel like they're part of something good that's going on for the community and they can listen to great music and they can buy trinkets and jewelry and t-shirts and drink beer and, and see their friends and it's just fun it's it just is fun. it's free to attend Access free is to free. attend yeah. 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 You, can leave a, you, you can leave a tip yes. you can put there's a jar there where Donations you put money really in mm -hmm. if you just feel like you know I had way too much fun here today <laughs> that it didn't cost me anything. I can get in that wallet and put a 20 down. Highly it. encourage it. <laughs> we certainly, the, the event would not be successful without the love and support of the community. And um, we are so fortunate to be in our 12th year with this event because, you know, there are events that you see that you're like, oh, I missed that. You know, they don't do that anymore. So, again, we're, we're really fortunate to be in our 12th year. Uh, we have a great group, the Home Room Qantas Club, that, that puts this event together. It's a great group of volunteers. Um, a small club. We're always always growing, always welcoming <laughs> new. Um, so if you like to have fun and, and you want to be a part of and you want to help donate to children, we just encourage anybody who's interested to join us. Again, it's a really great, fun group. And, um, you know, being in those beginning years and seeing where the festival started to where we are today, it, it is an ex it's been an exciting mm -hmm. growing process. And each and every year is unique in its own way. Mm -hmm. And so um, even the seasoned veterans, you know, you never know what's going to happen <laughs> going into the event. And so we're all very excited. Again, a huge thank you to our sponsors because there is no way we could do this event without our sponsors. Our volunteers. And our yes. volunteers. <laughs> yes. Um, absolutely and so we just encourage people to come out join us bring your families you know set up a, a chair and just enjoy the music have fun and mm -hmm. so that's what the event is all about family fun and 
um, people that have been a part of the club sure. for many years, right. and I think that they can still tell stories about cookbook sales and food <laughs> sales. And you know, we used to do many, many small fundraisers, and now we just focus on the one large fundraiser. So this is it. This is the event where we are able to provide. Um, support to Favlos for kids where they are packing backpack meals for children on the weekends. This is the event where we are able to buy Christmas presents for the children at the Head Start where we go deliver those Christmas presents. This is it. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have plans, we just really encourage you to come out. Anything that you, you just being at the event helps right. to support the event. Mm -hmm. Don't think you have to drop a hundred dollar bill on the donation bucket but if you do we thank you um but again just just show up yeah good luck good weather and we'll see you there thank you for having me and don't forget to tune into this week's living show tonight at 6 30 p.m thursday morning at 9 a.m and thursday friday and saturday evenings at 6 30 p.m this week's guests include officer cody brandon who delivers this month's police pointers jackie duncan covers some telehoma history and we have some video from colonel beverly lee's speech from the Tullahoma Great American Defense Community Luncheon. All that and more on this week's Living. And stay with us, we'll have your weather forecast right after these messages. MacArthur Manor Assisted Living is passionate about creating better experiences for our Manchester seniors. Our residents describe us in a few words. Welcoming. When you walk through the doors at MacArthur Manor, we'll treat you like family. Caring. Through high standards of personalized care, we help residents live life to its fullest. Engaging. With a wide range of life-enriching activities, there is something for everyone at MacArthur Manor. With our residents and staff now vaccinated, call us today to schedule your safe and personalized tour. Hi there, this is Terry Stroop, Stroop's Accurate Refrigeration. Summer's about to wind down, fall's right around the corner. It's time to get signed up for your fall maintenance checks and let's get out and support our local high school football this year. Let's go, cats. Welcome back. We'll take a look at your weather forecast at this time, starting with your weather history on this date. Our record high was in 1931 at 97 degrees. The record low for this day was in 1981 at 40 degrees. The average high for this day is 80 and the average low is 58. Clear with patchy fog for tonight with a low of 64. Sunny skies expected for Wednesday with a high of 93 and a low of 67. And sunny skies continue for Thursday with a high of 87 and a low of 54. And that's our News Leader Report for this evening. We invite you to join us each Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday evenings at 6, 8, and 10 p.m. for News Leader. Stay safe and have a great evening.